Okay, so let's have a look at sort of writing some data to SQL Server. We're going to have a look at an example of loading data. And in this example, what I have is another database. I'm going to be using this a small little database as the source of the data. Uh, and that has multiple spatial columns on the data. And we're going to load those multiple spatial columns into SQL uh, Server. And then we're going to look at some tools that you can use if you need to create more complex tables than FME natively can uh, support. And then we're going to have a look at uh, some incremental updates and how that can work. Uh, so sort of around the idea of database replication across from one database to another. So let's uh, bring up uh, FME Workbench. That's uh, not the workspace we're going to start with. And uh, let's have a look at the starting workspace uh, I have here. So the data set. Can we zoom in yeah, a bit, Mark, so we can take a look at Zoom in a little bit here. We've got a new slider zoom bar at the top that yeah, you can use. That's yeah. Correct. Okay, so the source data I'm starting with is actually coming from a small world uh, database. I'm not sure whether uh, many of you are familiar with that. And uh, what we're looking at is a very simple. Uh, electrical um, network uh, in that small database. So here's, um, here's the electrical network, and it's got some customers and uh, supply points on that network. And uh, the small world database inherently uh, supports multiple spatial columns. And uh, so if we go to load a SQL Server database with multiple spatial columns, how do we do that? So the first thing we would do here in FME, our uh, sort of native SQL Server writer uh, can't create, at the moment, can't create more complex uh, tables that uh, include multiple spatial columns. So in this case here, what I'm using is a transformer called the SQL Executor, which allows us to throw pretty well any SQL command at uh, the database. And in this case, the SQL command that we're um, going to be using is the create table where we can create the multiple spatial columns. So here are the two spatial columns that we're going to create in that SQL Server table, the location and label uh, for the electricity supply points and uh, so on. And the scripting as well to test whether that table already exists so that uh, we don't get uh, errors along the way. So you can pretty well throw any SQL at the database that your database supports. And the interesting thing in this case is no data is returned. So we're not doing a select or anything. We're just uh, firing off um, a create table. Yeah, so what are all those um, those things in the over there on the left-hand side where it talks about SQL spatial functions and SQL aggregate functions yep. and so stuff like that? so we have put in tools there. So here's the list of the database tables. So as you're building up your SQL select, uh, we'll have a look at another example of this. You can pull on the tables, have a look, pull on, drag on the attributes within the table. And then we've also thrown in uh, all the various SQL commands that you can use and functions that you can drag on there to add to your SQL select. And if you don't know how to use them, there's actually a direct link in there to the uh, actual help for those SQL statements. So that takes you right to the Microsoft help for those various uh, SQL commands and yeah. functions. Yeah. OK. So when we run this workspace, the uh, creator transformer um, makes sure that this uh, uh, happens first. There is also another um, sort of uh, sister transformer for the SQL executor, which I could have used here. It's called the SQL creator. And that guarantees that the SQL is the first thing executed before any data is uh, read from the database. OK, and so looking at uh, some of the example data, let's uh, go down to, I think it's the, um, substations. So when we're working with multiple spatial columns in FME, we do have to sort of tell FME what we're doing. And the reason for that is that FME kind of stores a multiple geometry, multiple spatial geometry, in a similar way to we store an aggregate feature. So we have to tell the aggregate that it's actually being treated as 
a multiple geometry rather than a multi-part geometry. And so we have a special transformer here, the multiple geometry setter. And as we read in the data from, in this case, small world, it's got the multiple spatial columns on it. We're just telling FME that this data is not just a pure aggregate multi-part geometry, but is actually a, um, uh, a multiple geometry. So that's all that does. It just says, uh, uh, yes, we're containing multiple geometries, multi-spatial fields. And then what we have is uh, some properties on the geometry where we can name the spatial column. So as we write this out to the SQL Server database, and I've got an annotation and a location column on this uh, entity, on this uh, feature, then we need to say to tell FME what those uh, geometries, what spatial columns those geometries attach to. So the geometry property setter is a transformer that allows us to do that. So we're, in this case here, we're telling it, that this particular geometry is the location, and in this case here we've got another one that uh, is the annotation geometry. And then we can write those out to, in this case, the, uh, the substation. Don't you have to do a setting on the writer to tell it to handle the fact that it's yep. multiple columns? So also on the writer here we have to warn it that uh, these special geometries are coming, and that's what uh, that uh, parameter there is handle multiple spatial columns is set to yes. So FME knows that it's got to look for um, these particular kind of uh, aggregates, which are aggregates that have been told that they're multiple spatial objects, and that these uh, geometries will have a geometry name on them which tells us what column that's going into. So if we look at one of those tables um, in our SQL Server database, I've already created them ahead of time. We can see that we've got those two geometry columns there, the location and the label. And there was something important about the order of those columns too, wasn't there, Mark? Yep, because if you just are using the default behavior of FME, you can just read one of the geometry columns at a time. And the default behavior of FME, well, if, it, if you're just starting to read, and we are going to look at some read examples in, in a little bit, um, it, FME will just read the first geometry column unless you tell it something else. So having the location first means that the locations will be the columns that FME by default reads rather than the annotations or the labels. Cool. Okay, so we could just uh, run this uh, workspace with prompt and run, and uh, we would. Uh, I've got the database tables set up so that they won't drop the table. But uh, one of the parameters I had there on my prompt and run was to um, uh, truncate the tables first. And uh, so that will uh, set all the parameters on the feature types to say, yeah, drop the, drop the features from the table and uh, reload them. The other thing you could have prompted for there was possibly your password, too, rather yep. than hard coding a password into your workspace. Yeah, I'm using, uh, in this case, I'm using Windows Authentication, so uh, I don't uh, need to do that. Oh, excellent. Yeah. But yeah, any of the parameters that you want to set and have the user set when they uh, run the workspace, uh, we, can, we can do that. So it looks like your translation was successful. Yep, yeah. and uh, so we've got some data sitting there in our SQL Server. Okay, so then I'm just going to open up a second workspace, which is essentially the same one. It's got slightly different parameters uh, set. So it's uh, this guy here. And uh, one of the things about Small World, which is a nice feature of the Small World Reader, is that it returns back uh, differences uh, from from the database. So they have a versioning mechanism they call the alternatives in Small World. And so in this workspace, which is the same as the previous one with these parameters just set, I've got, uh, I've told it that I'm reading from uh, the FME alternative. Uh, I want to compare that with the baseline alternative, which is the top uh, alternative. And then I've set the writer mode to the update here. And so let's just have a look at what that happened how that works. So instead of writing at this point to the, SQL uh, to the SQL Server database, 
I'm just going to write to the uh, ins data inspector so we can have a quick look at the intermediate results and see what uh, FME is doing when we do these incremental updates. So here you can see is a partial set of the data, or which are the up update uh, features that have been recently added to that uh, database. Um, and we've got cables, uh, joints, and uh, supply points that have been updated. If I click on one of these features here, we can see that um, the small world reader has automatically added an attribute called the FMEDB operation. And uh, when you're trying to do incremental updates into a database, it, actually all of our databases support this uh, um, mechanism. If you set this attribute, the FMEDB op uh, operation, then FME will do these uh, uh, commands. And so the three values for FME DB operation are insert, uh, modify, or update, delete. Update. update or delete. And I think we do have some deletes in here. So there's a, there's a delete that has been returned from the differences in the small database. Uh, I know there are some updates in here, but I couldn't find any uh, when I was uh, poking around in here. Uh, earlier on, but um, anyway, there are some updates, but uh, uh, these ones are inserts. But it's only the small world that will give these to you automatically, right? So generally your data isn't isn't as well organized as this, so... Yeah, and that's always a problem when you're doing incremental updates. So uh, typically when you're in the database realm, if you're doing database replication, you might have a history table or some kind of a journal table which is tracking those changes, that's a really um, useful mechanism. I don't know what the equivalent pro product is now, but Esri used to have a product called JTX, which uh, tracked all the changes in the database that we used to support. Um, so basically, if you can read a history table, you can figure out what those uh, changes are, and then you can set the FME DB operation. And is it Go ahead. Okay, and there is also a transformer called our change detector transformer that can sometimes be used to figure out differences between two sets of data too. But all of these are ways of getting the data so that you can flag it as to whether or not it's an insert, an update, or a delete. And okay, and so if we were to run that workspace now, uh, and I redirect those, uh, uh, instead of redirecting to the inspector, I just uh, send it right off to the writer, then um, I guess I could bring up in the data inspector um, a view of the data as it exists now. So somebody was asking, how do you connect to your database? So this is actually the dialogue you use in both the readers and the writers to connect to your database. And so the kinds of things it's looking for are the server name, and so here on our machine, we're using a SQL Express edition, but if it was a, a named SQL instance, you could have put that in there. And again, we, uh, Mark mentioned he's using Windows authentication, so there's no prompt here for user or password, but if he turned that off, it would ask for a user and a password. And so that's all that's required to connect to your database. And once you've done that, you're given the, the option of picking the tables out of that table list. So we go out and read the list of tables that are in that database present them to you, and then you can pick the ones you want to read to. And that's standard across all our database formats. The dialogue for connecting is in the readers and the writers and then any of the database transformers. And there, it's the, sort of a common dialogue through the whole lot of them. And so this is the area that we're going to do those updates to. So if I run that workspace, uh, those few features that are detected as being uh, changed in the core small world database will be um, sent over to our SQL Server, and I think if I refresh here, you can see those new features have popped up uh, down at the bottom, were inserted, and some scattered around here somewhere, some, some deletions. Okay, so you're using the data inspector here, Mark, and so this has uh, been improved so much in FME 2013 that I would, exp I would uh, encourage anybody to take a look at it, and what's the big reason for that? push into the data inspector, the table viewer. 
this is my favorite part of uh, pretty much 2013, is the fact that now when you're working with databases, we can actually look at the data as a real table as opposed to a funny little feature information window on the side. So you'll notice Mark is flicking between the different tables of the different feature classes that he's looking at. We can actually sort that data into the different orders. If you want it sorted by ID, you can sort by ID, etc. And so this has really taken our viewing tool into the next generation. And so give it a try. It's an option up on the up under the view at the top. So if you click on the view, one of the options under the windows is to pull up the table viewer. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's not the default uh, visualizer. And of course, if you're new to FME, you're probably wondering what the big deal is all about. If you're an existing FME user, you will you will have watched really us slowly bring the data inspector in and wondered why were we bothering. And what's but, so great about a table view? Right? <laughs> exactly. But now it's in there, and this is the way you can set it as your default. With is in your FME options under the tools menu, and turn that on and try it out. It's still got a few things that aren't quite there. Um, compared to the universal viewer, but personally I find for working with databases that it's now my default um, application. One more thing before you close that down, Mark, wasn't there something I had to do on the writer to tell it that I was passing through these FME DB operation No, we already uh, looked at that. Did you look at that already? Yeah, that, and that was the handle multiple spatial columns. No, it was the writer mode. Just down underneath that we have a writer oh, mode. Yeah, yeah that's telling it that we want to do updates to our data as opposed to just straight inserts. And so that fact that that's set to update mode and that that DB operation is coming through on those features tells the writer to do to act on that FME DB operation. And there's one more thing on each of the feature classes. You have to give it a, a field that it's going to do the matching on. And so under the format attributes there, we have a SQL key column where we tell it when the feature arrives, check and see if the IDs match, then act on the FME DB operation. So it'll either do an insert, but if it's a delete, it goes and looks for the matching ID and then deletes the record.